everyone, and welcome to the Centurion Leadership Battalion podcast, your source of accountability, inspiration, and motivation to become your best and reach your fullest potential every day. Our motto, it's simple, to use our determination to crush our everyday leadership tasks so that we dominate in our delivery of services and products to our clients and achieve victory in personal growth, profitability, and creating environments for those around us to prosper. Let's get this show started. Hey guys, welcome back to the Centurion Leadership Battalion podcast. This is your host, Elena. I am hosting on my own today for a core value exploration episode for core value number four, lead through action and by example. I'm so happy to have you listening in today. Please don't forget to leave us a rating and a review, both if you have time and none of the above if you are driving, but we really appreciate having feedback from our listeners. You can always connect with us over on social media at Instagram. We are Centurion Leadership Battalion. You can also find us over on Facebook. We would love to connect with you, hear your feedback from the podcast and hear any questions that you would like us to go over on the podcast. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast and let's hop into the core value exploration episode. Today, we're going to hop into core value four. like I said, lead through action and by example. And this is an important core value for so many reasons. It's really hard to be a leader or to follow a leader that doesn't lead by their own actions and by their own example that they set for those who follow them. It's really important when you are leading anyone, whether it be your team at work or your family, your children, whoever it is that you are leading by example of how they should act. Have you ever heard the quote, do as I say, and not as I do. That's really hard to come by, right? We all want to follow leaders that we can replicate their actions. We can see and follow what they are doing in their lives and that they are living out and practicing what they preach. Essentially. It's really important to be doing this, especially if you're leading a team in a small business or a brand or even a large business, uh, really leading by your own actions. I want to go over a few points uh, I found in my research of how different leaders lead through action by example. I'm just going to read through a few of these and we can see if any of these are resonating with you all. The first is demonstrating character, forming the foundation of everything that a leader says and does is by demonstrating their own character and their actions. You want to be following a leader who is ethically and morally upright. Also being accountable for your actions and responsible for the actions of others. When I say being responsible for the actions of others, don't take this as if someone else on your team fails, that's your problem. We really are leaning into you are setting the example and you are leading your team. So if you end up leading your team in the wrong direction or misleading your team, then you are responsible and accountable for that. You are accountable for your own actions, as well as for the instructions and deliverables that you expect from your team. Another point was checking your ego at the door and keeping it there, right? Leadership is not the place for a person with a big ego. You really have to humble yourselves in order to be a leader to begin with, but you really have to humble yourselves because as a leader, there are times that you will fall and you will fail and your team will be looking at you to see how you handle those failures. Promoting resilience. There's no shame in getting knocked down because getting back up is what matters. Resilience is absolutely necessary in leadership. We talk about this all the time on different episodes, failing forward, right? Everyone's going to fail, but it's how we learn from those failures and how we recover from those failures that really matter and really set the tone for our team. Getting in the habit of asking questions, but not expecting easy answers. This makes it safe for people to ask you questions, right? When we are able to ask questions and not expecting super easy, clear answers, we go ahead and set that example for others that they can ask us difficult questions. If you ever have been in a situation or in a conflict at work or at home with your team, and you need to ask a question, you need further direction, but you feel like, I don't know if this person has the expertise or has the knowledge to answer this for me. You may steer away from, from asking to begin with, and you may just try to answer the question yourself or continue your action without asking those important questions. And that actually leads us in a huge roundabout, right? So we want to be in the habit of asking questions, even if we know the answers may not be easy to our teams and to others in other forms of leadership, because this makes it safe for the people who are following us to know they can ask us hard questions. 
let's go over a couple of more managing around obstacles because the path to fulfilling your goals is very rarely straight, right? We have to show others how we manage obstacles. If you are owning a new business or a new brand, you know, more than anybody that the path is not straight, right? There are road bumps and there are twists and turns and curves that you have to manage around. Let's say that you have a really strict deadline and you are waiting on a supplier to supply you something. And the supplier is unable to supply that product or that device, whatever it might be for you. And that in turn puts your whole schedule behind. You cannot move on to step two without step one, right? How do you manage around that? How do you handle that? What is your attitude towards that? We are showing others through our example, how we handle obstacles. Management is the discipline of detail and leadership is the art of thinking beyond details in order to make things better. So we really have to be good managers and good leaders. And those are not interchangeable things. Management is the discipline of detail. How do we handle the details? How do we strategically plan? How do we strategically think, right? But then leadership is thinking beyond those details and being creative and being a good problem solver, all of those things. And you really need both. Creating a winning culture so people feel confident about themselves and their work. How do we handle our culture within our businesses or brands or even our homes? What is our culture? What is the undercurrent and the tone of all the conversations and all of the interactions we have with those around us? Really take some time to think about this. This is not just an HR question. This is an individualized question for every single person on the team. What culture are we creating? Now that we've gone through several of those points, I hope some of those resonated with each of you of ways that we lead through action and by example, and how leaders really do need to be thinking in order to be effective leaders and lead by example. I want to go through a few of the pillars of leadership or the 18 E's. If you are familiar with our podcast, these are our Centurion Leadership Battalion Pillars of Leadership for 2022. So here we have a f- several different words. They all start with E just so that we can be really creative. <laughs> and I want to go through how some of those correlate and go along with core value number four of lead through action and by example. One of the 18 E's is experience. So we have listed experience as the long-term growth from the hard knocks of life and or business that are required from failure and risk to improve your skill set. It's the street credit you get by showing years of action, continuous discipline, and leading by example. It is a continued pursuit of growth through purposely putting yourself in uncomfortable situations where you've had to lead or grow, where you know you always win by achieving success in that task or learning from your mistakes. That is our definition of experience and how that plays in as one of the pillars of leadership into great leadership. I think leading by example is a perfect way that we can show our experience. It's hard to lead by example in the beginning. It can feel like, because you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have no experience in this. You know, I've never been a leader before. I don't know how to handle these roadblocks, but I think even without experience, you can have that attitude that embraces the challenge and embraces the speed bumps and really shows your team and those following you, how you lead in the face of those hardships. Another pillar of leadership is emotional intelligence. We have defined emotional intelligence here as our ability to navigate our feelings and emotions, as well as others. Leaders with high emotional intelligence recognize and process feelings and emotions and apply them in the discovery of logical solutions that motivate positive behavior and outcomes, both in themselves and in others. Self-awareness, self-reflection, and ability to listen and process and resilience to criticism are very important in the success in this area for leaders. So emotional intelligence, like I just shared about experience, is something that you can have even without a lot of time as a leader. Emotional intelligence is a skill. I strongly believe some people are born with more emotional intelligence than others, but that does not mean you cannot develop it. Just like some people are born with more muscle tone than others, or certain sports or skills come easier to some emotional intelligence is something that you can learn and really master. And it's very important in order to become a great leader. Let's go over one more pillar of leadership with you. Education. Education is a lifetime pursuit of knowledge and growth for you and for those around you inside and out of the classroom with mentors, books, and podcasts like Centurion Leadership. It is the continued humility in the world of knowledge that you always know nothing, but have an insatiable hunger to always know more. Education is so important when you are leading by action or by example. When you're a leader and you're creating a team of leaders, you also want people to continue pursuing their own education. 
whether that's education about the field you're in or about the task at hand. Education is so important in order to become the best version of yourself. Education also increases your humility and that shows those on your team who are looking to you. Oh, our leader is always continuing his, his or her education. Our leader is always diving into podcasts and books and mentorships and things to continue to grow in this area. How can I follow behind and also attempt to grow? These are just a few of the pillars of leadership. If you'd like to hear more about our pillars of leadership, we'll be doing another episode on these as well as tying them into several episodes in the future, but they really tie together nicely with core value four of lead through action and by example. So I want to give you a few takeaway questions to think of as you finish up this episode. How have you led by example in the past? This could be in your business or in your household, any way that you feel you have successfully led by example. What was the outcome of that? Did the team or the people looking up to you follow right behind? Were there more challenges associated with that leadership? How have you led by example? What are some ways that you know you can grow in leading by example? Is it your personal health and wellness that you need to grow in and demonstrate better for others? Is it the continuous growth and increased knowledge of the sector or market that you are working in? What are some ways that you can grow? And finally, if you were to be the best version of you, how would you be leading? These are just a few things to think about as you take away this episode and log off of your podcast for the day. I hope that you guys have really enjoyed learning a little bit more of core value Four. I can't wait to come back with Justin and do a little bit more information on what we are talking about, about leading through action and by example. And I really thank you for listening in. Hope you have a great day.